Hello everyone and welcome to our contemporary math lesson today. Uh, we're talking about 15.3 apportionment methods. So apportionment is the process of distributing a certain number of items to several groups in a fair manner. How did it come about? Well, the large states wanted a proportional representation based on population. Because they had a lots of population, they wanted more say uh, and a bigger representation. Small states, however, wanted equal representation, meaning just because they had less people, they still wanted the same amount of representation. So the solution was they created the House of Representatives as well as the Senate. So the House of Representatives is a proportional representation, and the Senate is an equal representation with two per state. Even still, how do you divvy up five pencils to three people? Alright, that's kind of our question here. So, well, each person would get one pencil, right? And then there would be two pencils left over to split between the three people. Well, assuming you didn't want to actually break the pencils, who would get those extra two? So some terms we're going to need to be able to do these problems is something called a standard divisor. And it's going to be a number that you divide things by. And this is found by taking a, the total population divided by the total number of items to be allocated. And we can use the standard divisor then to find the standard quota. So the standard quota is the population for a particular group. So now we're looking at an individual population uh, divided by the standard divisor. Now sometimes you might need to use a modified divisor. So it's an arbitrary number, meaning arbitrary you get to pick it, and it's going to be slightly less or more than the standard divisor. So you can still find your standard divisor and go just a little bit above or a little bit below and you can get a modified divisor. Then if we use a modified divisor we can find a modified quota. And this is the quota found using the modified divisor. So you would just take the population for the group and divide it by the modified divisor. A couple other terms. A lower quota is a standard quota rounded down. An upper quota is a standard quota rounded up. A modified lower quota is the modified quota rounded down. And a modified upper quota is the modified quota rounded up. And the modified rounded quota is the modified quota rounded to the nearest integer. Okay, so we're going to talk about these different rounding techniques and the quota is the actual amount that is given out or apportioned to the different groups. So first off, Hamilton's method. Now this is like actually Alexander Hamilton. His method was to first calculate each group's standard quota. So we're dealing with standard quotas. Then give each group its lower quota, meaning round the standard quota down. Then distribute any leftover items to the groups with the largest fractional parts of the standard quota. In Jefferson's method, this is Thomas Jefferson, pretty important guy, also is mathematical apparently. The first thing is to use a modified divisor less than the standard quota. Here we want to use a modified divisor less than the standard divisor to find each group's modified quota. So for Jefferson's, we're going to go a little bit below the standard divisor. Then we find each group's modified lower quota, meaning we round everything down. 
Then, if all the modified lower quotas add to equal the number of items to be apportioned, meaning this works out perfectly so we give away every item, then give each group its modified lower quota. So go ahead and give out that amount to each group. Otherwise, we need to choose a new modified divisor back up here at number one and try the, the process again until it does work out so that everything is given away. All right, in Webster's method, here we want to use a modified divisor that is less than, equal to, or greater than the standard divisor to find each group's modified quota. So now we can choose something that is above, equal to, or below our standard divisor. And then we're going to find each group's modified rounded quota, meaning now we're going to round using our normal rounding rules. And this is the only one where we do that. Now we apply the same thought as we did with Jefferson's method. If all the modified rounded quotas add to equal the number of items to be apportioned, give each group its modified rounded quota. Otherwise, choose a new modified divisor and try again. So again, if the divisor we used actually works so that when we round everything, we give out all of the items, great, we're done. Otherwise, we have to go back up and try a different modified divisor. It's going to adjust the modified rounded quotas, and we're going to do that until we actually give out all of the items. And our last method is Adam's method. Here, we use a modified divisor that is more than the standard divisor to find each group's modified quota. Then we use this to find each group's modified upper quota. So all we have to do is take all of our numbers and round up. If all of the modified upper quotas add to equal the number of items to be apportioned, give each group its modified upper quota. Otherwise, choose a new modified divisor and try again. So our last three methods all have this idea of we need to choose a divisor that's going to give us a quota so that all the items are apportioned. Otherwise, we have to pick a new divisor and start over again. Now, just in summary, it's good to have all the words written down so that you can go back through and follow, follow how to find the apportionment. But this summary is going to be very helpful. So for Hamilton's, we use the standard divisor, and we use a lower quota. And this one's special because we distribute the remaining items based on the highest fractional standard quotas. Meaning, if you earned a fractional part of an item to be apportioned, if you earned the highest amount of that fractional part, you should actually get a whole, a whole extra one. <coughs> now for Jefferson, Webster, and Adams, you're going to use modified divisors, and all the items must be allocated. But it's pretty easy to think about this. For Jefferson, we use a lowered modified. So we pick a divisor that's a little bit below the standard. And guess what? We use the lower quota. Okay. For Webster's, here you can pick something that's bigger than, equal to, or less than our standard divisor. And notice here, we're going to actually round. So you could round up or you could round down. Now for atoms, you use something, a divisor slightly above the standard, and notice you use the upper quota. So again, Jefferson, down, down. Webster could be up or down, and round, up or down. For atoms, it's going to be up and up. Now, when we're trying to pick a modified divisor, it's helpful to understand this relationship between the divisor and the quota. So if you increase the divisor, so if you pick a higher divisor, that means you're dividing by a larger number and your quota will actually go down. Okay. If you pick a smaller divisor, okay, the smaller the divisor you pick, the higher your quota will go. 
So when we're dealing with Jefferson, Webster's, and Adams, we have to allocate all the items. So if we allocated all, or if we are too high, that means our divisor was too low, and we would need to raise it up a little bit. If we are too low, meaning we didn't allocate all the items, that means we need to lower that divisor so that the allocation will go up. All right, let's talk about Hamilton's method, and we'll do an example here. So as an example, 50 new laser printers are to be distributed among five different schools. Okay, apportion the printers using Hamilton's method. So we might think, oh, 50 printers between five schools, let's just do 50 divided by five, each school gets 10. Well, what happens if one school is a lot larger than another school? They might actually need and use more printers. So this is that idea of the representational apportionment. Down here, we can see the school's populations. So we have schools A, B, C, D, and E. And school A has a population of 210, B is 165, C is 160, D is 175, and E is 190. And so the total population of the five schools is 900. Okay, so first, we want to find the standard divisor for this problem. And that's going to be true of every problem. So remember, the standard divisor is the total population divided by the number of items to be allocated. Well, our total population is 900, and we're allocating 50 items. So we do get 900 divided by 50, which is 18. So our standard divisor for this problem is going to be 18. All right, second, we want to find the standard quota for each school. Now when you're doing this, we want to round to the nearest hundred. Okay, so to find the standard quota, remember, it's the population of the group divided by the standard divisor. So we take each of these populations and divide it by 18. Okay, so we're going to do 210 divided by 18, 165 divided by 18, 160 by 18, 175 divided by 18, and 190 divided by 18. And this here is going to give us our standard quota. So if you have a calculator, you can go ahead and find those. I've already found them here. So we get 11.67, 9.17, 8.89, and 9.72, and 10.56. Okay, now if we could split printers into fractional parts, A would deserve 11 and 2 thirds printers. Okay, but we can't do 2 thirds of a printer. And so this is what we're going to do with Hamilton's method, is we're going to actually get the lower quota for each one. Okay, so third, we want to round each standard quota down to the next lower integer. Okay, so it doesn't matter what happens here. We want to round all of these down to the next lower integer. And it has the effect of basically chopping off the decimal in each of these cases. Okay, so 11.67 will go down to 11, which chop off the decimal. 9.17 goes down to 9. 8.89 goes down to 8, so on and so forth. Now you may think, hey, that's not fair. 9.17, he was a long way from getting another printer, but 8.89 that, that school is really close to getting another printer, and they had to drop all the way down to 8. Well, here's where Hamilton's method makes up for that. If we were to add up all of these printers, so if we add if we had 11 plus 9 plus 8 plus 9, plus 10, now we're only giving out 47 printers, meaning we have three more printers that we can give out. So next we want to distribute the remaining items to the groups with the largest fractional parts, and the total should then equal 50. So 
we have three more printers that we need to give out. So who has the highest fractional parts here? Okay, looks like our 89, our 72, and the 67. So since these three schools were closest to getting a new printer, they're each going to get one of these three. Okay, and so we're going to add one here, we're going to add one here, and we're going to add one here. Okay, the other schools will just keep the same amount, so B stays at 9 and E stays at 10. Now this would be our final apportionment, and the printers add up to be 50. Okay, so you can kind of see here the population in A was bigger than in B, and you can see they got more printers. So 12, 9, 9, 10, and 10. All right, let's take a look at Jefferson's method. So the same problem here, 50 laser printers, 5 schools, the schools have the same population, and now we want to use Jefferson's method. So first we want to choose a modified divisor less than the standard divisor. So notice because it was still 900 okay, and 50 printers, our standard divisor is 18. So it's still at 900 divided by 50. So for Jefferson, we want to go less. So let's pick something slightly below 18. Okay, so it's arbitrary, meaning we get to choose it. So let's try 17.5. So don't get all crazy like this. We only go a real small amount away. Okay, so 17.5 is going to be good. So our modified divisor was 17.5. Well, what do we do with that? Second. We want to find the modified quota for each school. And again, we're going to round to the nearest hundredth here. So to find the modified quota, we're going to take each school's population and divide it by the modified divisor. Okay, so we're going to take the 210 divided by the 17.5. We're going to do that for each of the schools. So 165 divided by divided by 17.5, 160 by 17.5, 175 divided by 17.5, and 190 divided by 17.5. Okay, let's take a second to calculate those out there. And round to the nearest hundredth. I've already done that here. So A turned out to be 12, B was 9.43, C 9.14, D was 10, and E is 10.86. All right. Our third step here is going to be round each modified quota down to the next lower integer. So notice we picked a divisor below the standard divisor, so we're going to go down with our modified quotas. So this one has no fractional parts, so we're just going to leave it at 12. Here, 9.43, we're just basically going to chop off the 4.3. 9.14, we're going to chop off the 0.14. 10 we can leave alone, and 10.86, we are going to chop off the 0.86. Okay, so here is our modified lower quota now. 12, 9, 9, 10, and 10. Now, what we have to do here is check to see if all the items have been apportioned. If not, we're going to have to choose a new modified divisor and try again. So let's add all these up here. 12 plus 9 plus 9 plus 10 plus 10. And that gives us a total of 50. Okay, so what that means is we chose a modified divisor very well because we apportioned all 50 of our laser printers. So because this added up to 50, we're going to go ahead and give each school this modified lower quota. And so here would be Jefferson's apportionment, 12, 9, 9, 10, and 10. All right, let's move on. 
Let's take a look at Adam's method. So again, same problems, 50 printers, 5 schools, same schools right here. So for Adam's method, we want to choose a modified divisor that is more than the standard divisor. And again, our standard divisor had been 18. So modified divisor, it's arbitrary. So we're going to pick something a little bit more than 18. Think about what you would pick. Let's go ahead and try 19. Okay, so we can go as much as 1 above, that's fine. So let's give 19 a try. So we're going to use a modified divisor of 19, which we arbitrarily chose, because it's bigger than 18. Now we want to find the modified quota for each school. So again, it's the population divided by the divisor. Okay, so now we're going to divide each school's population by 19 here. You can do this in your calculator. And I have the numbers here. So we got 11.05 for school A, 8.68 .68 for B, 8.42 for C, 9.21 for D, and E was an even 10. Now, because we chose a modified divisor that was above the standard, we're going to actually round the modified quota up to the next higher integer. Now this may feel kind of weird because even if it's only 0.05, we're still going to round this up to the next highest integer. So basically what we're saying is, well, since we earned a fractional part of a printer, we're actually going to get a whole printer. Okay, so any fraction gets rounded up to the next highest integer. So 11.05 is going to go up to 12. 8.68 goes up to 9. 8.42 goes up to 9. And 9.21 is going to go up to 10. And 10 remains the same. All right, next we have to check. Have all the items been apportioned? If not, we're going to choose a new modified divisor and try again. So let's go ahead and add these. Okay, and our total is 50. And that's the number we're looking for, so therefore, we're going to go ahead and give Adam's apportionment. Okay, so school A gets 12, B gets 9, C gets 9, D gets 10, and E also gets 10. And our final method for this lesson is Webster's method. Now for Webster's method, we already determined the standard divisor was 18. And we're going to have to choose a modified divisor that is equal to, more than, or less than the standard divisor. Okay, so this is one that gets a little bit trickier because we can go above, below, or equal to 18. So again, it's arbitrary. We're just picking this out of the blue. So let's try 18.25. Okay, so if we choose 18.25, hopefully by now you're getting comfortable. What do we do with the divisor? Well, we divide each of the populations. Okay, so we want to find the modified quota for each school. It's the population divided by the divisor. So it's going to be 210 divided by 18.25. 165 divided by 18.25. 160 divided by 18.25. And 175 divided by 18.25. And for E, 190 divided by 18.25. Okay, so just take a second in your calculator to calculate these. I've already done that here. We get 11.51, 9.04, 8.77, and 10.41. Now, here's the trick. 
Because we used a modified divisor that was either above, below, or equal to, we're actually going to round each quota to the nearest integer. So now we're using our normal rounding rules. So if we have something that's 0.51, which way is that going to go? Well, if it's 0.5 or up, then this is going to go up. If it's below 0.5, like this 0.04, that's going to round down. So essentially what we're saying here is if you earn more than half of a printer, then you're going to get an extra printer. But if you earn less than half of a printer, then you're not going to get that extra printer. Okay, so we can see 0.51 is going to go up, 0.04 is going to go down, 0.77 is going to go up, 0.59 is going to go up, and 0.41 will go down. Okay, so this will go up to 12, this will stay at 9, this will go up to 9, this will go up to 10, and this is going to stay at 10. Next, we're going to have to check to see have all the items been apportioned. So let's add them up. 12 plus 9 plus 9 plus 10 plus 10. And that equals 50. Yay! So that means that we chose a divisor that was good because all the printers were given out. Okay, so if all the printers are given out, we actually go ahead and give Webster's apportionment. So school A gets 12, school B gets 9, school C gets 9, D and E both get 10 each. All right, so this has been 15.3 apportionment methods. In class, we'll talk about uh, a little bit easier way to perform all those calculations quickly. Since we're repeating the division, we can use a table of values uh, to help us out. Uh, especially when we're choosing divisors that don't necessarily work. So if our modified divisor doesn't work. We're also going to look at some examples of how we can uh, alter our divisor in case it didn't work. So look forward to seeing you all in class. Thanks for watching.